What I'm making over today is this picture frame stand that I got at the thrift store for $3. Here on the back, you can see where the frames used to go. Well, it's the frames where the pictures and the glass used to go. And I'm going to take all the hardware off, the hinges and these little um, holders. So everything is off. I'm out here in the backyard. I'm using this Rust-Oleum chalk. I didn't really like it. I didn't like the coverage, but... By the time I brought it in and um, worked on distressing it a little bit, I think it's okay that some of it show, showed through, but I don't think it's worth the $8 that I paid for it. It was easier than painting with a, a brush. I'll give it that much, so maybe it wasn't too bad. And here I'm just taking my little sander, and I'm going along all the hard edges. I start out soft, but... If you can tell from the picture, when um, I get through, I did get a little heavier handed to make it a little bit more distressed. And then I went across the flat surfaces to um, just kind of um, make it look a little worn, a little older. That's kind of the thing these days. Here they are finished and sanded. I marked the back, right, left, and center. See, there's an L on that one for left because the hinges had to go back in the right spot. These are frames from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just laying them out because I wasn't sure I bought five with the intentions of doing them the way I ended up doing them, but I'm just laying them out here to see if I do like the way that they're going to look. Now, we're going to take the galvanized sheet out of the picture frame, and then we'll just save that picture frame for something else in the future. After I get this off, you'll notice that I try to take the metal off of the back end. See, I have my little um, spatula thing out there. I knew good and well it was held on by a screwdriver, but I wasn't uh, a screw, but I wasn't thinking. So see there, <laughs> I've used these before. So once I once I had that aha moment, I got the the little clip screwed off and put it aside because we're going to put it back on. Now, the tricky part was cutting the metal down to fit that um, opening. So I didn't mark on the front because I wasn't sure if it would show through, if it would come off, if I didn't cut it right. So I just eyeballed the opening in the back and marked it and um, it worked, it worked fine like that. Now, these scissors that I'm using, I got at Harbor Freight. They are good little scissors for cutting. Look, look how easy it cuts through this metal. Not that it's stick metal, but still. And you don't ruin your good scissors in the process. Now, I had to trim it down a little bit. Wasn't quite the first time. Also, it was just a little bit long so I ended up trimming some of the bottom off as well. After it's trimmed I give it a little try and you can see it fits so I was really happy about that. Now I'm using some scrap cardboard that came out of the calendars from the Dollar Tree because I need a backing on the metal and then I also need a template to cut out my other pieces of metal. I got it all cut out, and it fits fits like a glove. Before you glue it down, make sure you have the part of the groove that will have actual contact with the wood, so you will have something to glue around the edges. And the way I'm going to glue is in um, just little... Um, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, but just spots, I'm going to do E6000, and the um, open spots are going to be for hot glue. The hot glue will do immediate hold, and the E6000 will be a permanent hold. All right, y'all. Now, I left this part in because I wanted you to see that everything does not go perfectly. I had the piece of metal down too far and the hot glue dried before I got it in. So see what I'm having to do? I'm having to pop it out. 
<laughs> Go back over it with more hot glue. The E6000 is fine. Now here, I'm just I'm just fast forwarding to let you see. I pressed it down really good. I put more hot glue in the gaps to try to hold it down with the cardboard. Then I'm going to come along. I'm taking a sip of coffee there. <laughs> then I'm going to come along and put some more hot glue in that gap to try to hold it all together. So there I have all of them put in. I didn't, I didn't think you needed to see it. Now, that little flower, I tested that to make sure I liked it. Now I'm going to show you how I did it. I bought this little shot glass, I guess, at the thrift store specifically for this project because I like the shape and the size was perfect. For that one, I marked on the inside with the Sharpie so I would know to make all the other ones the same size. This is just the Dollar Tree nautical rope. Now, what they sell today is a lot bigger than this one. I don't know if they still sell this um, size or not, but I like to put a little glue at the end just so it doesn't fray and you're just going to start wrapping and gluing the bottom in a spiral only to the size of the bottom of your little glass now see once you get to the size of the the bottom then start gluing on top of the rope to make it go upwards into a base shape See, put your glass in there, do the hot glue, and I wish I was wrapping it the other way around. You could see better, but I wasn't thinking. If you just keep um, gluing and wrapping, just make sure you don't glue it to the glass. It's just a guide to um, help you get it nice and even and get them all uniform. So that's all we're doing, just wrapping around. I know this is kind of boring, but I thought I would let you see the whole process instead of cutting. I will let you see it go all the way from start to finish. I could sing to you. Oh, there's my phone. What about that? <laughs> Hold on. And here is the finished product. Just pull your glass out. Cut the end of the rope. I kind of cut it at an angle. It seems to maybe not stick up as bad. Personal preference. You can do it however you want to do it. And then just take you some hot glue. And there again, I glue the, the edges so they don't fray out. And then I just glue the whole thing down. Mash it down with my little um, rubber finger. Those things, the finger protectors. You need If you don't have one in your craft room, you need one. Now I'm just taking... A really long, longer than I need piece of rope just to make sure I have enough. Um, that way I know I'm not underestimating. But just run you a bead of glue all the way up the side. Make sure you have your, your seam at the back. You don't want that cut off part in the front. So just make sure um, when you hang this, you hang that in the back, which we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. But just do that on both sides to make a hanger. See, there you go. You just have your little, a little rope base. Now, to glue it on the back, I just figured out how far up I want it. Run a bead of glue across the rope, the twine, and the wood, and then half of a popsicle stick. And that will hold it on there just fine. And I did that to all of them. And here we go. These are flowers from the Dollar Tree that I thought were so pretty when I bought them, but had no idea what I would do with them. So I'm just pulling off little sprigs, uh, one of each color. Then I just added a little sprig of what I think is baby's breath. It comes from the Dollar Tree, too. Now for the pictures. This is just a paper pad that I had got at Michael's, and this is a pattern that I know I won't use. So I'm just turning it over to use the back part. Or the brown because I think that'll match um, really well 
with those baskets. Now, I had these pictures printed in wallet size, and that's how it came for to a sheet, because that is the perfect size for these frames. They are two by three. If you get these frames, those are two by three um, pictures. And I got my little slide cutter out because I wanted a nice straight line. So I'm just going to go through and cut all the pictures. Now that the pictures are cut, I'm just cutting a little uh, brown mat that's going to go behind the pictures. I cut, um, just use a picture for a guide. <laughs> I didn't get too technical on it, but it worked. Then I cut one out for each picture. Took my glue stick, glued the pictures to it. It's almost time for the reveal, and here it is. I absolutely love the way this turned out. I, I really, really do. I hope that you like it. You can let me know what you think down below. And I will see you on my next video.